2021 Volvo V90 T6 AWD R Design Review, The Everyday Unicorn. But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. If you want a spacious station wagon and your definition of the body type excludes lifted, cladded, not quite crossovers, then you've pretty much got one choice, the Volvo V90. Reintroduced after a 20-year absence for the 2017 model year, the V90 is undeniably one of the prettiest cars on the market today, with a long, low stance that avoids any pretensions of rough roadability, recalling its boxy predecessor's country club cachet. Fresh off a of very minor mid-cycle update, revised front spoiler and fog lamps, the 2021 Volvo V90 could easily be considered the company's spiritual flagship, recalling those 740, 960, and V90 wagons that made the Iron Mark logo a staple of upscale households in the 1990s. Keen to live out my best cool dad fantasy, I recently spent a week behind the wheel of a T6 AWD or design with Polestar optimization, the sportiest version of the V90 available. And while it has a few flaws, the large station wagon still makes a strong case for itself, not the least being it's not a crossover rarity. The biggest Volvo wagon relies on its clean design and handsome proportions, a long hood, impressive dash-to-axle ratio, flat roof, steeply raked rear window, and graceful rear quarter panels, to attract onlookers. Thor's hammer headlight accents tie this wagon in with the rest of the Volvo lineup, and for 2021, designers modernized the vertical taillights with a little sequential ballet upon lock or unlock. Even in sportier design form, the V90 is short on aggression, limited primarily to a gloss black finish on the window surrounds, mirror caps, grille surround, and unique grille mesh. This tester also wore slick, optional 20-inch wheels. The R design's unique interior gets black Napa leather upholstery, Napa leather with Nubuck suede inserts are a no-cost option, grey contrast stitching, gorgeous aluminum mesh dash and console trim, and more aggressive front seat bolsters. Soft touch surfaces abound inside the Volvo, with leather appearing on the steering wheel and door armrests, as well as excellent plastics even low on the center console and door panels. The V90's spare interior design still looks fresh even after a few years on the market, thanks in part to a vertical 9.0-inch center touchscreen and 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster. Stylistically, there's little to complain about, but I'll give it my best shot. For starters, I don't love any Volvo in our design form. On this particular vehicle, it has a stuffed shirt effect, the T6's thrust is adequate, but no one's racing for pinks behind the wheel of a V90, no matter how dark the grille is. I much prefer the identically priced inscription, which gets satin silver exterior accents, matte wood interior trim, and a wider choice of upholstery colors, blonde leather for me, please. Ticking the R design box also seems to have a detrimental effect on the big Volvo's freeway ride, too. A sharper suspension and those aforementioned 20-inch wheels transmit far too much grit from the road to your ears, even on relatively smooth surfaces. And on grooved concrete, the V90 was downright boomy, with unpleasant reverberations echoing around the trunk, loading it down with luggage or deploying the cargo cover helped somewhat. The R design, and more softly sprung inscription, comes standard with 19-inch wheels, get those if you insist on sporty styling but want a Volvo spec smooth ride. Luckily, just about everything else about the V90 impressed your author and his passengers. The front seats fit a variety of body types, with lumber that can seemingly adjust to the micrometer for both large and small frames. The long Volvo also invites its passengers to stretch out a bit more, with 42.2 and 35.9 inches of front and rear legroom, respectively. Though it technically isn't a class of one, the V90's nearest competitors, the crossover eyesed Audi A6 Allroad and Mercedes-Benz E450 All-Terrain, offer less front legroom, more rear legroom, and more headroom in both rows. However, the Volvo benefits from upright windows and thin roof pillars, giving it an airier, less claustrophobic rear cabin than its German rivals, and it packs in more cargo with the rear seats folded than the Mercedes, 69.0 cubic feet instead of 64.0, Audi doesn't publish such measurements for the all-road. Also working in the V90's favor are a long list of comfort and convenience features, including front seat massage, heated and ventilated front seats, a heated steering wheel, clever integrated rear booster seats, and rear door sunshades, all at an as-tested price of $68,435, barely more than the German starting prices.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.